everyone, this is Pete. Welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari ST games, some which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today is one of the latter. Today we're looking at Castle Master, or if you're Northern or Common, Castle Master. Uh, this was a 1990 release by Incentive Software. It was developed by a company called Tech, uh, with a Q, T-E-Q-U-E, uh, and they subsequently became known as Chrysalis Software in 1991. Um, they became most well known for their long series of officially licensed Manchester United football games, uh, as well as some PS1 and Saturn ports of a few Bullfrog games, like uh, I think Zed was one of them, and Theme Hospital was another. Um, but they did some of their own stuff along the way as well, so this was a relatively early title from them. Um, this game was built on an engine called Freescape. It was one of the earliest 3D engines out there. It was specifically designed to be uh, a very portable 3D engine that could run on both 16-bit and 8-bit platforms. So, in fact, the Freescape engine could throw around filled polygons on platforms ranging from the ZX Spectrum all the way up to Atari ST, Amiga, MS-DOS PC. So Castle Master and its sequel, The Crypt, um, they're often bundled together, in fact. Uh, so this copy I've got here has actually got both of them in here. So The Crypt is actually a standalone sequel rather than an expansion pack. Um, those were the last full Freescape games to get a commercial release for the 16-bit platforms. Um, they were followed by a sequel to another game, uh, which I've got somewhere. Here we are. Uh, Total Eclipse. Now I got a sequel uh, just for 8-bit platforms, oddly enough, uh, called The Sphinx Jinx. Uh, and that came out on Commodore 64, Amstrad, and Spectrum. And then there are also two versions of a package called 3D Construction Set, uh, which allowed consumers to create their own Freescape games, or Freescape experiences, I guess, because you could, you could just make 3D environments that you could fiddle around with if you wanted to. So, um, since I've got the package here, let's take a look inside it. So. This is quite an interesting package to me because it doesn't really fit the normal mold of um, what you typically expect from Atari ST game. Um, so the, the front is fairly conventional, but the, the back is interesting and in it doesn't have any screenshots on it. So it's just got uh, a bit of information about the game on here. This is quite a, this was quite a sort of retro thing to do even at the time. It reminds me of old Epics games almost, uh, which would sort of describe what the game is all about rather than trying to wow you with flashy screenshots. And so inside the box, we don't have a huge amount. Uh, we've got a manual, and we've got two floppy disks, one of which has Castle Master on it, and one of which has the crypt. We also got a foam insert. Don't think there's anything underneath that, no. So the manual, quite a nice one. Um, a cross-platform manual so it explains the differences between the various different platforms um, it's got some information about the game itself so we've got a little map of the castle here and how to play and instructions and screen layout and such like then we've got some unique instructions for platforms like Amiga ST and PC uh, so that's mouse control and there's a bit of uh, sort of atmospheric stuff in here as well so there's a there's a poem in here by Mel Croucher which is rather long actually Oh, it's very long, in fact. Yeah, this goes on for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen pages of poetry. Uh, you don't get that in games these days, do you? Unless it's actually included in the game text itself. But yeah, I won't read that to you now because it's thirteen pages and it'll take forever. So uh, yeah, that's an interesting addition to um, the overall package. So I think that's enough talking about Castle Master. Let's go play it. Okay, here we are with Castle Master. Uh, I've played a few of the Freescape games before, but I've never played this one before. So I've been very interested to try it for the longest time because I've always sort of been fascinated with uh, castles and medieval things and all that kind of thing. So choose your character, the prince or the princess. Now your choice here um, makes some minor changes to the game. It determines who you're trying to rescue. Um, so in a, a nice bit of gender equality you can be the princess rescuing the prince if you want to um, but it also I think it also tweaks a few of the puzzles here and there as well and perhaps the placement of some of the spirits let's go with the princess shall we why not okay so the aim of this game 
is to find your twin who's been taken away by a giant eagle apparently to this castle um, now according to the manual which I've actually remembered to look at um, this castle is sort of square in shape uh, and it's got four towers in the corners and a big courtyard in the middle and I believe what we're trying to do is to open the drawbridge or something uh, beyond that I have absolutely no idea and the manual doesn't really help you all that much either so let's begin in the wilderness outside the castle okay so, so we don't actually start inside the castle at all so here we go this is a freescape game um, you can generally control these in several ways so you've got the mouse cursor here and you can click on interface elements to move around should you so desire um, but in practice it's a bit easier to use either the keyboard or a joystick to move and the mouse to interact with stuff and so the way that we interact with stuff is we can either throw a rock at it or we can press the right mouse button in an attempt to do something and that has no effect no effect I need a bigger sword right so our first order of business is clearly to open that drawbridge obviously throwing a rock at it isn't going to do much good uh, we can look up and down now this was a really interesting aspect of freescape games at the time because we'd had 3d games before normally sort of grid based dungeon crawlers uh, and that sort of thing but even a lot of full 3d games didn't bother to allow you to look up and down um, and you may remember in the the sort of early days of um, first person chooses on PC it was even pretty rare to see look up and down like you couldn't look up and down in Wolfenstein 3d because there was no reason to uh, and you couldn't look up and down in Doom either because um, in Doom you had such a generous auto aim that you, you just had a point vaguely in the direction of an enemy in Doom and uh, you would kill it so as long as it didn't kill you first obviously okay so there's not a lot out here we got this big rock with which nothing happens if we attempt to interact or if we throw a rock at it as I mentioned at the beginning I have never played this game before so if uh, <laughs> if you have played this game before and what I'm doing is inordinately frustrating I can only apologize for that but uh, yeah I wanted to go in blind because like I say I've um, I've not played this before I do have some familiarity with some freescape games um, and so yeah let's see how we get on so there's this little house here this looks suspicious it's the wizard's hut okay what is this a well-placed rock is all you need to make the drawbridge fall with speed well I thought that might be the case but where do we place our rock it's got a lovely green rug that's nice and there's a thing on the table what's this it's cheese which I believe has healed us your, your strength is uh, represented by this um, this meter here so the more stuff on the dumbbells the stronger you are and the healthier you are uh, can't remember what this is oh that's keys so you collect keys and they hang off there this here is the <laughs> it's the spirit level do you get it um, that sort of tracks how many th how many ghosts you've killed uh, and these are the controls uh, you can click up here to get a status screen okay it's collected we've scored 6500 points somehow already even though we haven't done anything uh, and you can load and save your game from here as well uh, and you can also switch between run walk and crawl but you can also do that by clicking on the three windows in this one at the side here so back to the game if you please can we do anything with this star? Can't reach it. No effect. Nothing happens if we throw rocks at it. And I'm sure the wizard won't mind if his house is full of rocks when he gets back. Um, let's crawl around on the floor for a bit. 
Anything under the table? Or under his chair? I've played Dark Side. I know you hide stuff in the scenery sometimes. No. Okay. All right. So we can go outside. Now, you'll notice that the doorways in this are all black squares like this. Um, this is part of the way the Freescape engine works. So rather than having a completely coherent world for you to freely explore, uh, Freescape is split into smaller regions, basically rooms. Uh, but you could sort of fake an outside area like this by just making a room with a green floor. Um, oh, I reckon we've got to hit that square. What do you think? Yes, there we go. I am smart. Into the castle we go. I do miss having a strafe button. So that's one thing that wasn't really popularized until first person shooters. Okay, so we're in the gatehouse now. And that thing is obviously going to hurt us if we pass through it at the wrong time. There's a sign on the wall as well. I bid thee welcome, stranger, to Castle Master's realm, thine own twin self in danger to fall or overwhelm. Yeah, these these signs are a significant addition to um, the Freescape formula, because uh, the previous games created using the engine, Dark Sign and Total Eclipse, there, there was basically no dialogue or no text in the game at all, and you just had to sort of figure things out for yourself as you went along. Um, but this seems to have signs all over the place, which is a, a big improvement. Be footloose and fancy free to weave thine way without gloss. What? What are you talking about? Right, we are now in the southeast tower. And there is an arrow on the wall. And these are blocking doors. Can we open the door? Oh. Yes, we can. Um, let's check out the rest of this room first before we get too involved in it. There's some more cheese there. You hear a cry. That's probably not good. I'm guessing that maybe indicates that there's a spirit nearby, perhaps? Yeah, if you look, when I eat the cheese, the we get more stuff on the dumbbell, so I'm stronger at that point okay what's going on here oh that's a button okay so there's a number of exits out of here let's go and check out those first ones we were looking at the arrow pointing to this one suggests to me that this may well be a trap but Okay, so we're in the kitchen. There's something on the wall there. Oh, that looks like a key to me. Excellent. So we have a key. And some cheese. I'm getting super strong. Thanks to the power of cheese. Just like real life. Yeah, the only slightly awkward thing with this game is because the frame rate is so low, um, you have to make good use of the sort of walk and run mechanics to position yourself accurately. So there's nothing in the pot. Nothing on the spit. I guess we're done in here for now then. Okay, well we found a key, that's good. Alright, let's close that door. Door to Igor's chamber. Okay, do we need a specific key for that then? We have one key collected. Oh, and that's the key to Igor's room, okay. So how do we use that? Presumably we look at the lock and interact with it maybe yes there we go spirits oh no throw rocks at them all 
Or is that Eagle? What is happening? I don't understand. I might need to look at the manual. Bear with me a moment, if you please, while I look stuff up. Um, Decipher the clues, open the broad bridge, maintain your strength against each and every guardian spirit. Three potions, ten keys, and a plague of hazards may be encountered. Um, so it doesn't actually tell you how to deal with spirits, I don't think, unless it's buried in the bloody poem. <clears throat> I'm just skim reading the poem. This is all history. Yeah, so this this is all very nice. The villain is called Magister, by the way, if you were wondering. Um No, this is completely unhelpful. Getting started. A well-aimed rock will bring the jawbridge down. We've done that. Examine the hanging pictures to study the clues. Spirits can be exercised by some accurate rock throwing. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay. So I guess we just have to throw rocks at... Is this the spirit? I'm, I'm just trying to work out if this... Oh, there we go. Okay, so we just have to throw enough rocks at him. Presumably in his mouth. And what's in the chest, ladies and gentlemen? There's a key and some stuff. Treasure! Hooray! That presumably adds to our score. Okay, so what have we got the key for now? Now we have the unmarked key. So that will presumably go to an unmarked door, I imagine. Ow. Let's find out. Ow. Walk through the door, please. See what I mean about missing strafing. All right, let's look through here. Oh, those are stairs. Door to stairwell. So we need the right key. Which we don't have at the moment. So... Do we have a look at the ominous pointy door or the rectangular door? Let's try the rectangular door first. Okay, so this is the courtyard of the castle. Um, so there's presumably some interesting stuff to look at in here. So over here we've got what looks like some stables or some barns or something. Here we've got a well. Oh, there's a key in the well. Excellent. That was lucky. And that is the key to the stairwell. Fabulous. What's this? Suspicious looking hole in the wall. No effect. Hmm. Maybe it is just a suspicious looking hole in the wall. Or a window, as some of us call it. Big pole in the middle. With a flag. Uh oh. Ah, there we are. That is the spirit. I'm having a certain degree of trouble hitting this spirit. And he's draining my strength incredibly quickly as well. It does actually slow down while you're throwing the rocks though. So that's almost... Um... There we go. Got him. That costs a lot of strength though. <laughs> 
and eat some cheese. All right, let's have a look in whatever this place is. This is the hay barn. Some very square blocks of hay. And a big fork. Perfect. Okay. So, the the thing with the spirits, besides um, besides them draining your strength, uh, they also build up this spirit level in the middle. And if that reaches the top, uh, then the game's over. Oh, is that a key down there? I think it might be. So, I, I suspect this first playthrough is going to end somewhat prematurely, but um, we'll see how it goes. We have another key now. What's this one? Fourth floor key. I know how big this game is, because the, the thing with um, Dark Side in particular, uh, which is the, the only Freescape game I've actually finished, um, is it's if you know what you're doing, it's over in 20 minutes. Probably less than that, even. I think Total Eclipse is a bit longer. From what I've read about this, um, this is reasonably substantial. It's a horsey! Yay! What can we do with the horsey? Anything? Also, is it going to kill us? What's up, horse? No effect. Eat rock! Are you dead? I think you might be dead. That or there's nothing relevant in here. Oh, no, there's some cheese. Mmm, cheese off a stable floor. I'm sure this is delicious. Yum, yum, yum. Right. Um, so, what else is there to investigate? Is there anything behind the stables? No, because they're pretty much flush against the wall. Yeah. No room to get down there. This looks like a church or a chapel or something over here. So let's have a a peek. I'm sure there won't be any evil spirits in a church or chapel. No, there aren't. It's a pleasant surprise. Yeah, one thing this um, sort of got some praise for back in the day when compared to uh, Dark Side and Title Eclipse is that the the environments were obviously they look pretty laughable now compared to modern 3D graphics but the the environments in this were much more realistic than in dark side in particular dark side was very abstract total eclipse added some um some more realism because it, it added sort of things like uh rooms with multiple floors and platforms and staircases and that sort of thing um but this one actually made an effort to make rooms look like actual rooms rather than just a flat square with some random objects plastered on top of it. Which is good. More cheese for me, thank you. Out of reach cheese. Give me the cheese. Okay, so there are some obvious secret passages in here. You'll notice the one here behind this uh, false wall. Let's have a peep in there first. Is there something on the wall? No, it's just a blue ceiling. Alright, so this is the bell tower. What's this? Would a sore throat from Greece free an emperor from Rome when one is born every minute? Um probably some clever reference but I can't think what any of that is at the minute uh, 
Something fell out of the bell. But it's a... Oh, no, it's not a key. It's a... Pentacle. What does that do, pray tell? I don't know. And I don't think it mentioned that in the manual either, so... <laughs> well then. Alright, can we do anything with the giant crucifix? No. Alright, let's look at this not at all ominous little crawl space behind the pulpit. I'm sure it's fine. Ah, oh, spirits. Oh no. Oh, this room's incredibly disorienting. And I'm going to die, I think. Especially because I... There he is. Oh, it's a cute little ghost. Alright, so we're in a, a cavern beneath the chapel, I guess. We lost a lot of strength there. We're down to feeble. We found a pentacle, though. I still don't know what that does, but... Well, we found one. Yeah, this is really interesting so far, because... Although all the Freescape games have had exploration to one degree or another, this game has a really strong sense of sort of rooms relating to one another and there being secret doors and all that sort of thing. Catacombs, eh? Oh, it's a maze, isn't it? Let's follow the arrows. I'm sure they won't lead us anywhere unsafe. Can't see anything. Is that another arrow? Well, let's say go that way. Okay. So let's go this way. But that's where we came from. Oh no! This is going to be a make a map sort of game, isn't it? Okay, well, at least you have some weird sort of landmarks with these weird shaped doors. Alright, so we're out of the catacombs and into the cellar corridor. Does this one also lead back into the catacombs, perchance? Yes, it does. But there's a big green door over there, that's interesting. Let's go and look at the big green door. Cellar steps, I guess this is the way out of the cellar. All right, let's let's leave the cellar for now because the the cellar is a scary place, and I feel like I probably need some cheese before I go exploring. Yeah, but the cellar door is bolted, so you can only get down there by falling into that cavern, I guess. Northwest tower. Now, we've not been here before, I don't think. Ah, uh, some cheese. Heal me, please. What are the keyboard shortcuts for looking up and down, incidentally? I'm sure there are some. Uh, Atari ST. P and L for look up and down. There we go. That's much easier, isn't it, than clicking on those icons. Alright. Another door with an arrow. I'm sure it's fine. Spirits! Goblins! The Vault Vestibule. Bet this is locked because it's a vault. Door to Pentacle Vault. Ah, that's what pentacles are for. So you need ten pentacles to open that door. There is another key in here, though. And that is the key for. the library. Oh, hello. Oh, that's tracking how many pentacles we got. That's cool. See, you thought interface elements appearing in the world was a 2011 thing, but no! They were doing it in Castle Master. 
Right. Open sesame. Well, that's inconvenient, isn't it? All right, what's this? Padlocked. I laugh at your padlocks. Guard room. Oh, so we can look into the vault, and there's a key in there, and a whole bunch of gold bars. But we need ten pentacles to get in there, so... Not something we need to worry too much about at the moment. Into the West Passage. With some very blocky torches. Uh, what's in here? It's a courtyard. Oh, we are behind the stables. So you can get back here. Interesting. You're hopefully starting to see the appeal of these Freescape games now. This, Although the graphics are primitive, there's just so much wonderful exploration and discovery and stuff in them. And Yeah, I've always enjoyed them. And I'm glad I'm finally playing this one because it's, it's one that I always wanted to play back in the day but never had the opportunity to. I never picked up my own copy. The... Um, the copy I showed you in the introduction is actually one that I got from eBay recently for a, a fairly reasonable price, so because I've always been wanting to try it, but uh, this is my first time playing it. Ow. If I keep blasting that, is that going to put the fire out? Or do we need to put something on there? I'm guessing we need to put something on there. Which we probably don't have at the minute. <laughs> I love the sound effects as well. Right, that's not going to help us for now, I don't think, because we don't have anything we need to forge or stick in fire or anything like that. So let's head back through that little secret passage. And continue on our way. Ow. My head. Southwest Tower. What does it say? A needle in a sneezing stack is silver within gold. I never do well with cryptic clues. The, um... The actual manual... I know I keep mentioning Dark Side, but... The, the manual for Dark Side included a tip section but the entire thing was written in the style of um sort of daily telegraph crossword clues so they they were all written like those signs on the walls and so the the solution to the game was technically in the manual but it was so cryptic that it was more work to decipher that than it was to actually figure things out for yourself so I'm in a stubble door spirits kill it kill it with rocks Whew. this is a great haul I made that joke on Warriors Wednesday I know but you know different audiences you can all appreciate that joke it's a timeless classic yeah, see there. You see that platform up there? That's um, sort of a, a simulation of an upper floor, if you like. And that was something that Total Eclipse added to the uh, to the Freescape mix. As in Dark Side, you were just wandering around on the floor for the for the most part. Although you did have a jetpack, you could get you could like get on the roof of buildings and stuff. But when you were inside buildings, there was no um, kind of clambering up onto platforms or anything. Oh, it's a chair, not a door. That's why I can't open it. <laughs> Anything with this banner? No. What about the other banner? No. Okay. Okay. 
I just love the mental image of this princess staggering around this castle, just throwing rocks at everything and just poking things to see if anything happens. I'm on a quest, you know. An epic journey. Don't disturb me, I've got things to do. Right. Left atrium. Okay, I think we're back round to the... Yeah, we're back round to the gatehouse now, aren't we? So that there presumably takes us out to the courtyard. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, so there's not really any reason to pass through that um, that hazard there because you can just go round and come out of one of the towers. All right, let's go back in this tower. And we've explored both of those there. We haven't been through this door. And we also haven't opened the stairway yet. East passage, so it's something we can drop down through there. Northeast tower, have we been here? I don't think so. When my face is drained, I stare down open mouthed. Oops. Spirits! Die! Hmm. A swimming pool and a switch! Well, who would have guessed? And of course, there's a secret passageway down there. But there is also a door up here. Door to staircase, bolted inside. Okay, so that, that one's locked from the other side and once again I say see you thought survival horror games from the PlayStation era were doing that first but no this door is locked from the other side predates that by a long way all right what's through here oh no death death is through here or fatal fall that wasn't the spirit okay so we destroyed seven spirits we scored 715,000 points uh, and we got five keys that's not bad going for a first effort is it so I think we'll leave that there for now though um, so if you do fancy checking this out for yourself you've got some stuff for, to discover for yourself I'm definitely going to be returning to this though this is super cool um and as I mentioned in the introduction, there is a sequel that follows this up after this as well. So Castle Master the Crypt. So if you can't get enough of wandering around at low frame rates in uh, low polygon castles, then you can do a bit more of it with the second disc, which is often packaged with the first game at this point. So, okay. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please help out the channel by leaving a like or a comment and subscribing. New episodes of Atari A to Z are on Tuesdays and Atari ST A to Z on Thursdays. Check out Atari A to Z .wordpress.com for a full archive. Do please also check out my other projects, MoeGamer.net, where I explore Japanese and Japanese-inspired games from yesterday and today, and VideoPackGames.wordpress.com, which aims to catalogue the small but well-formed library of the Philips G7000 Video Pack Computer, also known as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. You can also support my work on Patreon, or buy me a coffee. You can find links to do both down in the video description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.